Welcome all to a new video, this is Mo from APC Mastery Path and I'm glad to be your guide today. In this video today I'm going to be showcasing how you can build your own crawl for AI web scrapper, what are the different libraries used, what are the different components of the code, what every component is doing, as well as showcasing how you can build your own shell executable file that can be de deployed internally or externally depending on your use. And lastly we're going to be seeing how the deployed solution looks like, what are the functionalities, what is the end product and how can and we download the scrapped HTML text into a markdown format. We're going to be splitting our video today into four main sections. The first section is what is web scrapping in general and how our system works. The second part is going to be about building the actual system. The third part is going to be deployment of that system. And the last part of this video is going to be understanding some potential use cases. So web scrapping in general is an automated process of extracting data from websites using a wide variety of them software or scripts. This enables the end user to efficiently collect, analyze and utilize large amounts of information available on the web. The system that I've built is reliant on having web scrapper built using a wide variety of them packages. It searches the internet using a specific link provided and then it extracts the text and images from that specific website. The extracted text in HTML format is then converted into markdown format. The end user can then download the markdown format. The system that we're going to be building today is reliant massively on the OncoCode Crawl for AI library on the GitHub website. It's one of them projects where you can go on www.github.com forward slash OncoCode forward slash Crawl for AI and you can have a thorough read about the constituents of Crawl for AI, what it does, the functionalities, all of the features and how to uh, install it. We're going to be discussing this in a little bit inside VS Code. The code itself is divided into four parts. The first part is installing the dependencies. The second part is crafting a number of them functions, helper functions. The third part is going to be creating the main function that is going to be deploying all of the helper functions. And lastly, creating a shell executable file to enable running code itself without the need of terminal. So the first part of this code starts with creating a virtual environment that I've called crawl for ai you can do this, uh, first off, you have to uh, install a virtual environment inside of Terminal, and then you can type and type Terminal, Python 3-M, uh, and then virtual environment, and then call it however you please. After you do that, it's gonna create for you a folder which contains the Python packages and the likes for that specific virtual environment, and then it's now time to activate that created environment by typing source and then the name of the environment as you see fit forward slash bin forward slash activate which you could see in here so you just need to activate that virtual environment and then inside that virtual environment you, you can then install a number of them packages whether through pip install and then the name of the packages or you can create your own txt file call it file and say requirements.txt and then you can type in pip install dash r requirements of txt. In my case, I prefer to do it package by package because it was a game of trial and error. So I installed first Trimlet, which is going to be used for the user experience and user interface, crawl for ai and crawl for ai sync, which we're going to be using for the actual web scrapping. And then the next package is markdownify, which converts HTML to a markdown format. Beautiful soup. That is required for the actual scrapping itself of the internet. Requests, to send some requests to the website so that we can get the data from the websites and liaison with the website. And then the next part is importing the required uh, libraries which we have installed. So importing Streamlit, requests, beautiful soup, markdownify, base64 in order to deal with t text data and then RA for as a regular exp expression so that we can clean the markdown file after we have uh, extracted the HTML and convert that HTML into markdown format. But the second part of the code is creating the helper functions. So the first function is going to be just custom styling of the overall um, streamlet so that it's, it enhances the user experience and then a function to adjust the URLs themselves, another function to convert from HTML to Markdown format, a function to cleanse the converted Markdown format, another function to create a button so that the end user can download the Markdown format or the Markdown file. And lastly, there's gonna be one holistic function or one holistic 
if, which is going to be deploying everything that we have created. So the first function is using the HTML coding, which you can use ChatGPT for. Uh, but I've defined here the font, what font I want, the background color, the color, the buttons themselves, the background for them, the color itself, what text, how the text is is formatted in terms of uh, the border, the padding, the and width, the box sizing as well for writing the queries. I jump to another function which is for uh, adjusting the resource uh, URLs. That one is important for getting the images from the URLs. So I'm not just scrapping uh, text data, I'm also scrapping images data. The third function, uh, which is using Markdownify to convert from HTML to Markdown. So I'm um, using the Markdownify and then all of them headings, as you could see here, keeping in mind all of the headings and the hierarchy of the headings, heading one, two, three, four, five, and six, so that the scrapped text is spot on and readable for the end user. Once the conversion has been done, it's now time to cleanse the markdown content. I found that there is a huge amount of empty lines between different lines and between paragraphs, headings and subheadings, and also unnecessary white spaces. So I had to remove them uh, using the regular expression library by stripping out all of the unneeded and unnecessary white space. And then the next function is creating one of them buttons to enable the end user to download the converted markdown format or markdown file. So whatever we have converted, I have converted it into um, a string and then using the base64 to undertake the encoding and decoding of the string content. The button itself, I've just dealt with it in terms of HTML code so that I uh, adjust the font size of it, the color and the border and the likes. And the last help function is the actual main function to build the Streamlit app where I have called all of the previous functions that I have created above. What is the URL that the end user is going to be creating? And then using the button that we have created above, it's going to be undertaking the scrapping using all of the functions that we have created above. So taking into account of soup, taking into account the adjust resources URL function, taking into account also the HTML to markdown format, the cleaning of the markdown format, and then the downloading of the markdown format. I've also included here a part for error handling so that if the provided URL is not correct, there is one of the messages. And if there is any sort of problems with the scrapping and the encoding, there is also an error message that is going to be provided to the end user. And lastly, it's running the app. Once you have created the file, you can run the file using streamlit run and then the name of the file.py. In our case, it's going to be that one. And then you can press enter and it's going to open the window for you inside your browser. Or in my case, I prefer to create an executable file. So the way to do this is first of all, you can go to the terminal tab and then press on your terminal. That's going to open a terminal like this at the bottom of the screen inside the path or the directory where your project is sat and then you can create an executable file a shell script file using nano and then run and then web scrap sh and then inside the created file you'll copy these lines of code and be where to delete the first hashtag and then once you have done that you can press ctrl o and then enter and then ctrl x so that these lines are saved inside that file and then in order to make that script file executable you can go here inside where you saved your file right click and then properties and then uh, permissions and then allow executing file as a program and once you have done that you will find your own created uh, file in my case i called it run web scrapper.sh and the way i can run it is by right clicking on it and then run as a program it's going to open that window for you saying that there's a local host that is opened in that specific portal and go to a web browser and then we'll find it here. So let's check one of the websites as an example. I'm using it for bidding so I'm just I'm going to copy that URL or that link of that website or that web page go to the web scrubber that we have created and again that is running locally as you can see here localhost 8502 paste it and then run web scrapper and as you could see it's quite fast and it contains all of the data from that specific web page uh, all of the details and the format is pretty spot on uh, if you scroll down to the end um, you can find that there is a, a button that we have created it's called download markdown file if you click on it you'll find that the extracted content.md is uh, created and you can open it in 
a wide variety of them text editors you can open it in a normal text editor like what you see here or we can open it in vs code so in vs code i have the extracted content if i click on it you will find it as you can see here it's pretty spot on there are some links that you can click on you will find the contract summary you can expand and collapse sections as you see fit uh, you can see the industry you can see the location of the contract itself southeast and the likes and then if you have systematic data like this or systematic titles you can carry out uh, some further cleansing and some further standardization of these files and convert them into possibly tables i've discussed that thoroughly in another video which i'm going to be putting the link in the description below Web scrapping is quite useful in a wide variety of them use cases. One of them is real-time market analysis. The quantity surveyor or the project manager can track the prices of material on the internet on different websites and that can enhance the cost estimation process. It is quite important for bid managers to track what are the new bids and tenders that are out in the market and that could enable the business to take substantial decisions about the bid or no bid uh, decisions. One important use case is regulatory compliance. Web scrapping can be used with building codes to ensure that the design teams are compliant with the requirements of the government in different countries. Web scrapping is quite useful as well in risk management by monitoring news websites, understanding the potential changes in the political atmosphere, as well as the changes in the weather conditions, which could also enhance the predictive analytics. And lastly, it can be substantially important in tracking how the company is doing by having a closer look at the social media of different clients and stakeholders to understand if they're happy or unhappy with the service provided. Before a person could build a web scrapper, they have to be reading into the terms and conditions of different websites, understand the legal issues, if websites allow web scrappers or not. In the different websites, there is a file which is called robots.txt. Uh, the end user, they have to read that file to understand if the website will allow web scrapping or not, because not each and every website allows web scrapping. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you found this video useful and insightful. Uh, I've prepared a couple of them other videos about fine tuning large language models and deploying them to open web UI. I'm going to be putting the links in the description below. You can also pay my website a visit at www.apcmasterypath.co.uk where I provide multiple packages for the RSS APC candidates to support them throughout their RSES journey. Also, I provide lots of insights about the RSS APC process, the different areas of competence, and how you can deploy AI within the construction industry. Do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe so that you get notified about our latest videos.